Yes, I am live now. Welcome on second to another new video. This is Santu Sahu and you are watching Sahu's tutorial. And in this YouTube video, I will be covering important MCQ questions. I will be covering 50 important MCQ questions for the upcoming Residency University's Master Degree Entrance Test that is PUMDET. This is part 4. And good evening to everyone. I hope that you are all well and you must be sailing in the sea of life by the grace of Almighty. Here I am again with a mock test for the upcoming Presidency University Master Degree Entrance Test. I will be covering 50 important MCQ questions. Choose when, hurry up and send me the confirmation if everything is okay. I will be covering 50 important MCQ questions for the upcoming PUMDET exam. Okay. Send me the confirmation if everything is okay. And those who are new to this channel, please do join the Telegram channel that is Santu Sahu. He is in it. You will get the daily updates regarding the classes. And this is my humble request to all of you. Those who are watching, please do subscribe the channel and tap the bell icon to get more notification that i will upload in this channel and to stay updated you must have to subscribe the channel and tap the bell icon okay tap the bell icon to get more notification on that and i don't want to waste your time let's begin the sessions here let's begin the sessions here so i'll be covering 50 important entity courses and this is actually part four in the previous three videos i have discussed to 150 important entity courses along with explanations this is part 4. I will be covering here another 50 important MCQ questions. Those are important questions for the upcoming President's University exam. So let's begin the sessions here. And here is your first question. And those who have not joined yet, you can watch this session so in the playlist. It will be available in the playlist. You can watch this session even later. Okay. So the first question is on your screen. Do you answer in the comment box those who are watching? And the first question is which period of English literature is known for its focus on nature and the individual? So, which period of English literature is known for its focus on nature and the individual? And your options are the Old English period, the Middle English period, the Renaissance period, the Romantic period. So, the period of English literature which is known for the for its focus on nature and the individual, it is the Romantic period from 1798 to 1837. The Romantic period 1798 to 1837. The Romantic period is focusing on nature and the individual. So romantic period is the right answer. And the romantic period is 1798 uh, 19, to 1837. The lasted from the uh, late 18th century to the early 19th century. So it was a time of great interest in nature and the individual. Romantic poets such as William Wordsworth, John Keats, P.B. Shelley celebrated the beauty of nature and the power of the human imagination. Okay, so this is your romantic period, romantic movement. Which novel by Jane Austen explores the themes of love, marriage, and social class in 19th century England? Okay. Which novel by Jane Austen is exploring the themes of love, marriage, social class, and uh, social class in 19th century England? Pride and Prejudice, Sense and Sensibility, Emma, and Mansfield Park. So the novel that is focusing, focusing or exploring the things of love and marriage in social class of 19th, 19th century England. It is Pride and Prejudice, okay? And its working title was First Impression. The first title of the working title of Pride and Prejudice was First Impression. First Impression. Okay, good evening, Rao. It is Pride and Prejudice is the Pride and Prejudice is the right answer, okay? Okay, got it. Okay. Who answer now in the comment box? Okay, it is question number three on your screen. Which Irish playwright is known for his work on ideal husband? William Butler, Samuel Beckett, Oscar Wilde, George Bernard Shaw. Which Irish playwright is known for its work called an ideal husband? An ideal husband. Which William Butler, Samuel Beckett, Oscar Wilde, and G. B. Shaw. Which Irish playwright is known for his work an ideal husband? Here the options are William Butler, Ritz, William Butler, Ritz, William Butler, Ritz, Samuel Beckett, Oscar Wilde, and no. Uh, which answering 
you are answering question number three now. Are you answering the question number three here? Are you answering the question number three here? Is it three? Yeah, the right answer would be actually Oscar Wilde. Okay. Oscar Wilde has written. Oscar Wilde has written. No, no, don't need to. An ideal husband is actually Oscar Wilde. Okay. Oscar Wilde. An ideal husband. Okay. The poor act play by Oscar Wilde that revolves around blackmail and political corruption. And touches on themes of public and private honor. It is first produced at the Haymarket Theatre, okay, London, 1895, and ran for 124 performances. Okay, so an ideal husband, an ideal husband is a poor act play by Oscar Wilde. Okay. Next question. Next question is on the screen. Who coined the phrase "make it new," which became a guiding principle for literary modernism? So modernism, okay, which became a guiding principle of uh, guiding principle for literary modernism. T. S. Eliot, Ezra Pound, James Joyce, Virginia Woolf. Who coined the phrase "make it new," which became a guiding principle for literary modernism? For literary modernism, was it T. S. Eliot, Ezra Pound, James Joyce, Virginia Woolf? Those who have not joined yet, you can. You can watch this session. So, okay, even later, it will be available in the playlist. It is Ezra Pound. It is Ezra Pound. Okay, it is Ezra Pound. Make it new. Make it new. Ezra Pound. Ezra Pound. Okay, point of phrase. Make it new, which became a guiding principle for literary modernism. What is the main characteristics of literary modernism? A focus on traditional ways of writing. An emphasis on conforming to social norms, or an experimentation with form and expression, or a preference for historical themes. Okay, what is the main characteristics of literary modernism? A focus on traditional ways of writing, an emphasis on conform conforming okay to societal norms, and experimentations with form and expression, a preference for historical themes. Okay. A focus on traditional ways of writing. Which one is the right answer here? The characteristics of modernism. Modernism. So you see here, a focus on traditional ways of writing that is wrong. Modernism is okay. Making it new. So making it new means here Ezra Pound is propounding making it new. So that is uh, away from traditional ways of writing. An emphasis on conforming societal norms. Okay, that is also wrong. An experimentation with form and expression or a preference for historical themes. No, that is experimentation. That is making it new. Experimentation with form and expression is the literary characteristics of modernism. Okay, here C is the right answer. What historical event had a significant impact on the development of literary modernism? So which yeah five C excellent. It is five C now. Experimentation with form and expression. Excellent. Okay. Question number six is on your screen. What historical event had a significant impact on the development of literary modernism? The French Revolution, the Industrial Revolution, the First World War, and the Renaissance. Which, uh, what historical event, okay, had a significant impact on the development of literary modernism? French Revolution. The Industrial Revolution, First World War, and the Renaissance. What historical event had a significant impact on the development of literary modernism? That Ezra Pound's okay, making it new, making it new, an experimentation with form and expression is the main characteristics of modernism. Here, it is the First World War. First World War. Excellent. Excellent. First World War had a significant impact on the development of literary modernism. Excellent. Now it is the First World War. So C is the right answer. According to 
Mary and girls. Okay. Mary and girls. What is a common theme okay, in modernist literature? I had posted this quiz okay, in the community section of my YouTube. Here, what is a common theme in modernist literature? A celebration of the past, a rejection of societal change, okay, a conscious break with tradition, or an exploration of fantasy world. That is going away from the traditional things. Okay. Conscious break with traditions and explorations with of fantasy parts and a celebration of the past. What is a common theme of modernist literature? According to Mary Ann Wells. Okay. Yeah. It is a conscious break with tradition. Excellent. It is a conscious break with tradition is the common theme in modernist literature. A conscious break with tradition. Excellent. Excellent. When did the Anglo Norman period begin? 1066, 1100. When did the Anglo Norman period begin? 1066, 1100. 1150. Anglo Norman period. Anglo Norman period. Now, William the Conqueror. William the Conqueror. The Battle of Hastings, okay, 1066. So, the it is 8 ka kya answer hoga? When the Anglo Norman period begin after the Battle of Hastings, the Norman Conqueror, William the Conqueror, 8 1. 8 ka ye ha, right? 1066 is the right answer. Okay, the Battle of Hastings, which is also known as the Battle of Hastings, who was the leader of the Normans who conquered. England. Okay. Who was the leader of Normans who conquered England? Okay. Uh, of 1066, the Battle of Hastings. Okay. William the Conqueror, Harold Godwinson, Edward the Confessor, or William Rufus. Who was the leader of Normans? Normans the leader of the who conquered England. William the Conqueror, Harold Godwinson, Edward the Confessor, or William Rufus. Question number 9 is on the screen. Here, William the Conqueror. Excellent. It is William the Conqueror was the, the leader. The Normans who conquered England in the Battle of Hastings. So, okay, that is 1066. The Norman Conquest. Norman Conquest. William the Conqueror was the Duke of Normandy who led the Normans to victory over the Anglo Saxons at the Battle of Hastings in 1066. What was the official language of England during the Anglo Norman period? During the Anglo Norman period, what is the what is the official language? 1066 to 1340. This is the Anglo Norman period, and 1340 to 1400. This is the Chaucerian period. Okay. What was the official language of England during the Anglo Norman period? Was it Old English, Middle English, Norman of French, and Latin? Official language, the language of the poor, the language of the church, okay, and the aristocratic people. Okay. What was that? Okay. After the after the conquer, after the uh, Norman conquest, okay, French became the language of the aristocratic people, the language of the church, the language of the Court, so it is the official, so they get the official language. Whereas the common people, uh, even they were using okay, the common people were actually using the old English, okay. Whereas the aristocratic people was people were actually uh, using normal French, and it became it is the normal French, okay, the official language of the England in the Anglo Norman was normal French, normal French, normal French, okay, was the official language of England. During the Anglo Norman period 1342, 1342, 14, uh, that is sorry, 1066 to 1066 to 1340. Okay. Old English was still spoken by the majority of the population, but Norman French was the language of the court, okay, the law and the church. So the court, law, and the church, and the aristocratic people, okay. Aristocratic people, they were using what? Norman French. Next question. Who is the author of the symposium? 
Longinus Dante Plato Aristotle okay? who is the author of the Symposium Longinus Dante Plato and Aristotle who wrote Symposium Symposium kis ne likha hai who wrote Symposium who wrote Symposium Symposium kis ne likha hai Question number 11 is on your screen. Question number 11 is on your screen. Do answer in the comment box. Who is the author of the symposium? Symposium was it Longinus, Dante, Plato, and Aristotle. 11 C, excellent, it is Plato. Plato. Plato has written symposium. Another novel. You know the novel? The novel symposium uh, was to be Muriel's part. It's called legal, na? That the novel, the novel symposium. There is a novel called symposium. And that novel was written by uh, Muriel Spark. Okay. Muriel Spark has written, okay, S P A R K. Muriel Spark has written uh, with the same title, and it was actually a novel, the Symposium. The novel Symposium was written by Muriel Spark, uh, probably a Scottish novelist. Okay. Scottish novelist, okay, Muriel Spark. Okay. He is the author of the book, the Age of Reason. The age of reason being an investigation of true and fabulous theology. So this is the subtitle of the book, The Age of Reason. The whole title is The Age of Reason being an investigation of true and fabulous theology. Who wrote this book? Thomas Jefferson, Thomas Hobbes, Thomas Paine, Thomas Aquinas. Kisne likha hai? The Age of Reason being an investigation of true and fabulous theology. Theology, theology, is nika hai. Muriel Spark has written the novel Symposium. Symposium, the novel. Question number 12 is on your screen. Who wrote The Age of Reason? Here, where he actually, uh, it is an anti religion book. It is an anti religion book. Anti religion book. It's an anti religion book. The age of reason being an investigation of true and fabulous, and here the right answer is Thomas Paine. Okay, Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine has written the age of reason. So here C is the right answer, and its full title is being an investigation. Subtitle is being an investigation of true and fabulous theology. What is the main subject matter of the age of reason? Age of reason by by Thomas Paine. What is the main subject matter of the age of reason? The scientific method, the existence of God, the history of religion, the principle of democracy. What is the main subject matter of the age of reason? That was written by Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine has written, okay. Thomas Paine has written the age of reason. Now tell me what is the subject matter of this anti-religion? Anti-religion. Anti, this is an anti-religion book, okay. okay. And what was the subject matter of this work? The scientific matter to nahi hoga, the history of religion. Agar history of religion hoga, to anti-religion that is also wrong. Principle of democracy it does not deal with principle of democracy. So it is the existence of God. Okay, the exist. It talks about so deism, deism. Okay, that is the existence of God. Okay, the subject matter of age of religion is the existence of God. But it is an anti-religion. Okay. Which philosophical position uh, does the Thomas does Thomas Spain argue for in the book The Age of Religion? The concepts of which concept was provided was given by Thomas Spain in this book for the age of religion, theism, atheism, agnosticism, theism. So which which uh, concept was popularized okay, was given by Thomas Spain? In his anti-religion book, The Age of Religion, was it theism, what is atheism, agnosticism, and theism. So atheism, theism, agnosticism, these were okay, earlier known, earlier known concepts. Whereas okay, theism was put in no. Deism. No, it is not theism, it is actually the existence of God. He is talking about there is the existence of God. Thomas Paine is actually talking about that there is the existence of God. God, God does exist, okay. So, he is giving the concepts of deism. And here you see, what is deism? Deism is derived from the Latin term deus, meaning God. Is the philosophical position. So, you see, 
This is a philosophical position and rationalistic theology that generally rejects regulation as source of divine knowledge. And it is asserting, what does it assert? It asserts that empirical reason, empirical reason and observation of the natural world are exclusively logical, reliable and sufficient to determine the existence of supreme being as the creator of the universe, that is the God. More simply, Jaisen is the belief, belief in the existence of God, specifically in a creator who does not intervene in the universe after creating it. No, no. Solely based on rational thought, without any reliance on religious authority. Okay, so this is based on rational thought. Okay, he is saying that asserting that empirical reason and observation of the natural world are exclusively logical, reliable, and sufficient to determine the existence of a supreme being as the creator of the universe. More simply, deism is the belief in the existence of God, specifically in a creator who does not intervene in the universe after creating it, solely or only merely based on the rational thought, without any reliance on religious authority or religions. That's why it is anti-religion. Actually, there is an emphasizing the concepts of natural theology. That is, God's existence is revealed through nature. Okay. Natural theology, natural theology, that is, God's existence is revealed through nature. Okay. This is the concept of deism that was given by Thomas Paine in his book, The Age of Reason, where uh, he is talking about the anti-religion anti section. What is the overall tone of the age of reason by Thomas Paine? By Thomas Paine, now tell me. I already discussed this question. So okay. What is the overall tone of the age of reason? Pro-religion, anti-religion, neutral, ambiguous. What is the overall tone of the age of, age of reason by Thomas Paine? Now tell me. Now tell me. Question number 15 is on your screen. Do you answer in the comment box. Now to tell me in the comment box what is the overall tone of the age of reason. I have already discussed this question. So explain the meaning of what is the subject matter. What is the subject matter? It is actually, yeah, it's anti-religion. Yeah. The overall tone is anti-religion. Excellent. Excellent. Next question. What is the title of the work? Nirati Chaudhari, Thy Hand Great Anna, The City of Joy, The Shadowlands, A Passage to India. A Passage to India. Now tell me, what is the subject, uh, what is the title, okay, of work of Nirati Chaudhari? And who wrote the novel The City of Joy? It is Dominic Laferi. Okay. City of Joy is actually City of Joy is actually a novel that was written in 1985. Okay. By Dominic. By Dominic N I Q U E. Okay. By Dominic okay, Laferi. L A P I D Double R E. Okay. The City of Joy. <laughs> That is Calcutta. Calcutta is renamed as City of Joy. Okay. After this novel, okay. You see, after this novel, the City of Joy, after this Calcutta is nicknamed. Okay. This is uh, you need to know that that the Calcutta is nicknamed after this novel. That is by Dominic Lapid. Okay. Chai. I even did not know. Okay. I even did not know. Okay. 15B, 16. Nirati Chaudhari, it is Thy Hand Great Anag. Okay. Thy Hand Great Anag. Okay. Thy Hand Great Anag is the right answer. Yeah. But the City of Joy is actually written by Dominic Lapiri. I even did not know that Kolkata is a Calcutta is named okay, after this novel. Okay. That is Dominic Lapiri's novel, that City of Joy. So, here, Shadowlands Tomita Goska. Here, Nirati Chaudhari. 
निरासी चौदह ताई हैं ग्रेट है ना चल नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन आफ्टर एम्नेशिया इज अ बुक ब्रिटेन बाय जीएन देवी सुसन बैसनेट गायत्री चक्रवर्ती स्पेबाग एंड जुम्पा लाहिडी सो ओनली टुडे ओके आई केम टू नो दैट दिस इज अ नॉर्मल द सिटी ऑफ जॉय बाय टॉमिनी ग्लाफिरी चलो एंड इज नेम्ड आफ्टर एंड आफ्� it is gn devi okay and gn devi has written after amnesia gn devi is the right answer what's what's prefaced to the lyrical ballads okay? prefaced to the lyrical ballads each believed to be the preamble to the romantic criticism now tell me in which year the preem the preface to the lyrical ballads was published in which year was it published it is the preface the preface to the lyrical ballads is considered as the preamble to the romantic criticism, the beginning of romantic criticism. The which year was it published? 1800, 1789, 1879, 1875. Very easy questions. In which year the preface was added? Okay. The preface was added in which year? Do like this session. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. First published in 1798, but preface was added in 1800. Okay, lyrical ballads was published in 1798. Okay, but preface what? Preface was added. Okay, in the second edition, 1800. So it is 1800 is the answer. First published in 1798, then 1800. Man, preface was published. That was the second edition. Who says that poets are? The unacknowledged legislator of the world, Sally, Walter Matter, Matthew Arnold, T.S. Who says that poets are the unacknowledged legislator of the world? And who says that poets are the unacknowledged legislator of the world? But we will be covering okay 50 important questions for the upcoming PUMD ET. Those who have those who are joined yet, you can watch these sessions later. It will be available in the playlist. Okay, do join the telegram channel that is Santu Saru EDC net. We will get daily updates regarding the classes okay, that I will be conducting in the future. And make sure to subscribe to the channel, tap the bell icon to get notification. Hit the like button as well. Hit the like button and they are silly. Yeah, silly, okay. Silly, silly has uh, written okay, that poets are the unacknowledged okay, ladies people of the world. Yeah, it is silly. Excellent. Who wrote the play The Rival Ladies? Okay, this is the Who wrote the play The Rival Ladies? William Shakespeare, John Dryden, Samuel Johnson, Oscar Wilde. This is the Rival Ladies. The Rival Ladies. William Shakespeare. John Dryden, Samuel Johnson, Oscar Wilde. It's written as the rival ladies. He has also written Aurangzeb. Aurangzeb. And probably the Indian Queen, Astridax. Twenty John Street. Twenty. The rival ladies. The rival ladies. William Shakespeare, John Dryden. Samuel Johnson, Oscar Wilde. Question number 20, John Street. 20, it is John Dryden. Okay. John Dryden has written. Okay. Aurangzeb, another work by John Dryden. Okay. The play, the Aurangzeb, here the rival ladies was written by John Dryden. 2020 B. Yeah, yeah. B is the yeah, excellent. B is the right answer. Dry dance, okay. All for love. Remember the subtitle of All for Love, that is the World Whale Lost, that appeared in 1678. 
is an adaptation of which of the following works okay the dryden's all for love is having the subtitle the world well lost published in 1678 is an adaptation of which of the following all is well that ends when well, love's labors lost romeo and juliet anthony and cleopatra dryden's all for love subtitle is world well lost world well lost is an adaptation Of which of the following, all is well that ends with love's neighbors first, Romeo and Juliet, and Anthony and Cleopatra. Okay. Earlier I have discussed this process with you, but in the previous session, Swati, excellent. This Anthony and Cleopatra. Okay, excellent. Anthony and Cleopatra is the right answer. No, no. It is uh, Rao. It is Anthony and Cleopatra. Okay, Anthony and Cleopatra. Which of the following plays of Dryden is in blank words? Don Sebastian, Love Triumphant, All for Love, The Indian Queen. And what is the subtitle of All for Love? What is the subtitle of All for Love? All here the Dryden. Which of the following plays of Dryden is in blank words? Don Sebastian. Love Triumphant, All for Love, The Indian Queen. He has also written plays like The Rival Ladies, The Rival Ladies. Okay. Which of the following plays of Dryden is in blanks? Don Sebastian, Love Triumphant, All for Love, The Indian Queen, Indian Queen. Which of the following is written in Dryden's? Uh, Yeah, the world well lost. Excellent. This is the subtitle of All for Love. ऐसे ही comment पे लिखते जाओ. जितना लिखोगे, जितना type करेंगे, उतना ज़्यादा याद आएगा. Okay. जितना ज़्यादा याद आए. जितना answer को पूरा comment कर कर करोगे, उतना ज़्यादा याद. It is yeah. It is All for Love. All for Love or the world well lost. Is written in blank words. Excellent. This is excellent. Raw. It is C is the right answer. Dryden's essay of dramatic poetry that appeared in 1668 is written in poetic form, dramatic form, narrative form, conversational form. Essay of dramatic poetry is a uh, is written in poetic form, dramatic form, narrative form, conversational form. In which form Dryden's essay of dramatic uh, poetry that appeared in 1668 is written? Was it in uh, conversational? Form, narrative form, dramatic form, and poetic fiction. Question number twenty-three is on your screen. I will be covering fifty important MCQ questions along with explanations. Do join, and those who have joined did you can watch this session. Even later, it will be available in the playlist. Do like the session. Do like the session. Share your friends as well. Yeah, excellent, excellent. This is the this is ah no. That's why I, no no no. no. That's why I have given. That's why I have given the option. क्या conversational form होता है क्या? Conversational क्या कोई form होता है क्या? Conversational form आप have you heard okay that there is a uh, there is a kind of form that is conversational form have you heard? इसीलिए मैंने conversational form दिया था. Conversational कोई form नहीं होता है. It is in dramatic form okay. That is in dialogue. That is in dialogue. Okay, got it? कॉन्वर्सेशनल फॉर्म होता ही नहीं है ठीक है दिस इज इन ड्रामेटिक फॉर्म ड्रामेटिक फॉर्म चलो ऑफ द फोर कैरेक्टर्स इन ड्राइडेंट्स एसे हु रिप्रेजेंट्स ड्राइडेंट नियंदर क्राइटिस लिसिडियस यूजिनस यू आंसर क्वेश्चन ट्वेंटी फोर इज ऑन ट्वेंटी फोर इज ऑन चलो ड्राइडन ड्राइडन इज नहीं अंदर ड्राइडन इज नहीं अंदर एक्सिलेंट ड्राइडन इज नहीं अंदर ओके चलो 
and he was actually favoring the ancients. Which of the following place of concrete is considered his best? The old bachelor, laugh for laugh, the double dealer, the way of the world. Yad rakhna, these are four works of concrete. Old bachelor, laugh for laugh. All for laugh is written by all for laugh is written by Dryden. Okay, Dryden has written all for laugh. Okay, and here the way of the world. X huh? way of the world. The most famous one is based one. The way of the world. Seventeen hundred. Oh. Seventeen hundred. Hmm. Chalo, way of the world. Defined semiotic. It's ne semiotic ko define kiya tha as the quasi necessary or formal doctrine of science to which abstracts what must be the characters of all science used by an intelligence capable of learning by experience. That is semiotic. Who gave the concept of semiotic? Charles Sanders Pierce, Father and Sister, Chomsky, A. J. Austin, which ne diya tha, who defined semiotics as quasi necessary or formal doctrine of science, which abstracts what must be the characters of all sciences by an intelligence capable of learning by experience. Defined semiotic as the quasi necessary or formal doctrine of science. 26 is on screen. 26 is on screen. Here it is Charles Sanders Pierce. Okay. Semiotic is a concept given by given by here Charles Sanders Pierce. Chubbis. Yeah. yeah. Charles Sanders Pierce is the right answer. Excellent. Excellent. Mm. Here. Prague circle of linguistic was disbanded in 52 and 34 and 266 and 57. Prague circle was disbanded in in which year Prague circle was disbanded in which year Prague circle was disbanded in which year Prague circle was disbanded 1952 1934 1966 and 1957 in which year Prague circle was disbanded it is it is in 1952 okay it is in 1952. So here A is the right answer and it is the explanation. The circles, the spark link, the, this is the Prague linguistic circles. Okay. Activities were interrupted by the German occupation of Czechoslovakia in 1939 and the circle finally disbanded in 1952 following the communist coup of, uh, of 1948. So Prague linguistic circle was finally disbanded in 1952. Which novel, Graham Greene? Deals with the persecution of Catholics in Mexico. Which novel of Graham Greene deals with the persecution of Catholics in Mexico? The end of the affair, the comedians, the power and the glory, travels with my heart. Travels with my heart. Which novel of Graham Greene deals with the persecution of the Mexico? Persecution of Mexico, uh, the Catholics in Mexico, sorry. Persecution of Catholics in Mexico. Question number 28 is almost clear. Which novel of Graham Greene deals with the, the slattery, the persecution of Catholics in, in Mexico? It is the power and the glory. Okay, the end of affair, comedians, the power and the glory is the power and the glory. In the power and the glory, we find the, the cleaning, the cleaning of the Catholics. In Mexico, uh, Graham brings the power and the glory. The story about his duty, whiskey priest, whiskey priest, yeah, that man is French for whiskey priest in 1930s Mexico. A short, pathos laden novel about religious persecution of 
after the Mexican Revolution, Revolution, the Catholic Church at the time was under attack for its considerable wealth and social control. Whiskey priest को याद रखना. Whiskey priest तो whiskey priest. ठीक है? This concept whiskey priest तो क्या है? The power and the glory by Graham Greene. The subjection of women is an important text of George Eliot, Byron, George Stuart Mill, and Hardy. And he has also written on on liberty, on liberty. Okay. Another important work is on liberty here. Yeah. The subjection of women is an important text of George Eliot, Byron, John Stuart Mill, Hardy. What is the right answer? Question number twenty-nine. Each on the screen. In a few days, I will be starting our okay, uh, sessions on EDC net paper one as well as paper. Our domain subject in a few days. Okay. Definitely, theory class will. I'll be starting theory class. I'll be starting theory class. Okay. All the concepts I'll be clearing. Okay, one by one, daily classes will be there. Okay, from old English literature, literature to postmodern. Okay, and the contemporary. Okay, everything will be covering. Okay, from every literature, from British literature, New Zealand literature, African literature, Australian literature, Canadian literature, diaspora literature. Okay. Then there is literature. Okay, I'll be covering world literature, most famous French literature. I'll be covering everything. Okay, okay, one by one. I'll be taking classes. Okay, I'll be taking classes, and I'll be covering everything. Okay, one by one. It is John Stuart Mill. Excellent. John Stuart Mill has written on liberty and also subjects. Okay, John Stuart Mill is the right answer. Excellent. In Paradise Lost Book Nine, Milton writes that Adam was overcome. Overcome with dash and so ate the forbidden fruit against the better against his better knowledge. Feeling charm, exceeding love, faithful love, and taste so divine. Okay, Adam was overcome with okay dash and so ate the forbidden fruit against his better knowledge. Feeling charm, exceeding love, faithful love, taste so divine. In Paradise Lost Book Nine, Milton writes that Adam was overcome. With dash, and that is why, yeah, hmm. Hmm. yeah, female charm. Hmm. It is female charm. He was overcome. Excellent. It is overcome. Was overcome with female charm. Excellent. With whom I a Richard wrote meaning of meaning. C K Ogden, J E Springrand, I a Richard W E B voice. The black consciousness by W. E. B. Du Bois. Okay. Yeah. With whom I. A. Richards wrote meaning of meaning. With whom I. A. Richards meaning of meaning. C. K. Ogden, J. E. Springrand, and you have I. A. Richards and W. E. Du Bois. Here it is. It is C. K. Ogden. Okay. It is C. K. Ogden. I. A. Richards has written. Okay. In collaboration with uh, C. K. Ogden. They have written meaning of many. It is C K of them. C K of them is the right answer. So, what did Henry James describes loose baggy monsters? Novels, The Spaniards, epic poems, his trousers. And what did Henry James describe loose baggy monsters? And Virginia says that it's a bright boob of life. Novel is a bright boob of life. Uh, yeah, no, sorry, sorry. This is the words in your old T. H. Lawrence. From here, you see, uh, this. Uh, what did Henry James describe? Okay, loose baggy monsters. Okay, novel here. That's a uh, right. And I told that it is a bright book of like 32 years. Yeah, novels. Yeah. Now I made a mistake. Okay, in my exam. Okay, when I was like okay, appearing in WB set exam, WB set exam. So that time, okay, I made the mistake. That I I answered that 
that uh, was Bharzini Aulu that each uh, novel is a bright book of life. Okay, I answered Bharzini Aulu, but uh, it is not Bharzini Aulu, it is D.H. Lawrence. Okay, I answered Bharzini Aulu. Okay. So it is D.H. Lawrence. Okay, D. Yad rakhna. D. Lawrence had said that uh, that novel is a bright book of life. Okay, bright book of life. Bright book of life. Okay. Bright book of life. It is D. H. Lawrence. It is not Bharzini Aulu. Okay. Don't make mistake like me. What is the subtitle of practical criticism? Okay. A study in literary judgment, a study of literary judgment, a study in literary criticism, a study of literary criticism. Okay. What is the subtitle of practical criticism of I. A. Richards? The subtitle of practical criticism of I. A. Richards is a study in literary judgment, a study of literary judgment, a study in literary criticism, a study of literary criticism. Novel is a bright book of life. It was actually uh, given by D. H. Lawrence. Okay. So the subtitle of subtitle of practical criticism is a study in literary judgment. A study in literary judgment. Okay. At thirty three ka e right answer hai. A study in literary judgment. Moving on to question thirty four. Okay. Yeah, I am very bad at doing that. Yeah, I am not sure. But I am not sure. The concept of hegemony as a sophisticated tool. Yeah, 33 नहीं है, 33 uh, A है. A study in literary judgment. A study in literary judgment. चलो. The concept of hegemony as a sophisticated tool for cultural analysis was developed by hegemony. The concept was given by Anthony Gramsci, Theodore Adorno, Herbert Marcuse, Sir Raymond Williams. किसने दिया था? तो hegemony किसने दिया था? बोलो. One second, मैं बस पटापट करो, पटापट. Hegemony किसने concept दिया था? Cultural analysis, sophisticated tool for cultural analysis, sophisticated tool for cultural analysis. It is, it is Antonio Gramsci. Chalo, 34 by Antonio Gramsci. Got it. Chalo, 34 by Antonio Gramsci. To whom did John Dryden dedicate? Hmm. Antonio. Got it. 35. Got it. Uh, 35 is 35. 34. 34. 34. Chalo, 34. Got it. Everyone. Got it. Don't worry. To whom did John Dryden dedicate the published version of the rivals? Okay. Published version of the rival ladies. Okay. So John Dryden has written the rival ladies okay. to whom he dedicates Earl of Moray, Earl of Oxford, Earl of Salisbury, Earl of Salisbury. So it is actually Earl of Moray. Okay. Okay. Dryden had dedicated okay, the rival ladies to Earl of Moray. So here he is the right answer. The rival ladies, the 1564 tragic comedy by the English writer John Dryden. It is originally performed by the King's Company and the Theatre Royal then in Brigade Street, Dryden dedicated the published version of the, of the Irish politician and playwright, the Earl of Moray. Okay. Next question. Okay. Who among the following films by Elephant of Tradition tells about death? Okay. Okay. Which amongst the following films by Alfred Lord Tradition tells about okay or deals about death? Okay. The Eagle, The Lady of Salad, The Princess, The Eagle. So the, the novel the, the poem that uh, in which uh, in which Alfred Lord Tennyson is dealing with death is the tossing the bar, tossing the bar, tossing the bar. Okay, I got it. Got it. Uh, tossing the bar is the right answer. Tossing the bar is actually a 1889 poem by Alfred Lord Tennyson. It is considered okay that Tennyson wrote in uh, wrote in in elegy. The narrator uses an extended metaphor to complete uh, to compare death with crossing the sandbar uh, between the river life. With its outgoing flood and the ocean that lies beyond death, okay, the boundless deep to which we return. Okay, so crossing the bar is actually exemplifying the death, death, okay, dealing with death. Chalo. Fancy day, Grace Melbury, Elfid Swanford, Thompson E. O'Brien, the return of the lady under the green tree, the woodlanders pair of blue witch. So you see here, Thompson E. O'Brien is the uh, protagonist of return of the native. Who returns to native actually? Hmm. The return of the native is Thompson E. Bright. Thompson E. Bright is another native. Then you have Fancy Day, Grace Melbury, Elfrid Swanford, and you have now do answer. Now do answer. Question 37 is understood. Do answer in the comment box. Question 37 is the answer. Uh, 7 is understood. Do answer. Kya hoga? Ma ma ek kar diya, hai. 4 ka ye.
there is only one option there is only option that a4 b1 so here you see under the green tree is actually fancy tape okay fancy tape okay then you have c2 that is the woodlanders that is gray smell very woodlanders may call hai gray smell very okay gray chalo return of the native may call hai thompson you bright you bright chalo and elfit swan coat c you see actually that is the a pair of blue eyes and elfit swan coat a pair of blue eyes अंडर द ग्रीन उड में फैंसी डे एपेयर होता है ठीक है वुडलैंडर्स में ग्रेस मेलबेरी ठीक है Grace Melbury jacket from Woodlanders. Elfit Swan coat is a character from a pair of blue eyes. Got it? So it is actually this one. So okay. These are given here. Fancy day under the green tree. Well painting. Fancy day. Okay. Under the green tree, me aaya tha. Written of the native. It is Eton Hill me. And here bright is the character. pair of blue eyes mein elephant sword elephant sword pair of pair of blue eyes elephant sword theek hai sir theek hai next question the great fire of london took place the great fire of london the great fire of london and wait great plague of great plague of kab hua tha great plague of london kab great plague in london kab hua tha great plague and great fire great fire of london took uh, took place पहले आया था प्ले ग्रेट फायर ऑफ लंडन सो इट इज इन सिक्स वन ट्रिपल सिक्स ट्रिपल सिक्स ग्रेट फायर ऑफ लंडन इट इज इन सिक्सटीन हंड्रेड सिक्सटी सिक्स Is it 1665? Great Fire of London started on Sunday, September 1666, in Beggar Shops on Parding Lane, belonging to Thomas Fenner. Although he claimed to have extinguished the fire three hours later, 1 a.m. So the Great Fire of London is 1666. May who becomes Gregor Samsa's caretaker after his metamorphosis from a Humans into monstrous vermin in Kafka's *The Metamorphosis*. That means the sister, the sisters of Gregor Samsa. Gregor Samsa is the main protagonist of *Metamorphosis* by Kafka's *The Metamorphosis*. Okay, Gregor Samsa. 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 Okay, Gregor
answer. Which of the following the, uh, poem begins with a dream on the Melbourne Hill Sunday May morning? Dream of the roof, roof of darkness, fears the plowman. Here's the plowman. Which among the following poems begins as a dream? So, great fire of great plague. I have a plague. I have a great plague in London. It came in 1665. Fire. Great fire of great fire. Go by a one. Excel bath 1666. Okay. It is P.S. the plowman. Okay. Melbourne hymns on May morning. D is the which movement in literature and theater responded to the illogicality and the purposelessness of human life? Romanticism, surrealism, theater of the abstract, naturalism. Which movement in literature and theater responded to the illogicality and purposelessness of human nature? Those who are new to this channel, do join the Telegram channel. That is Santu Sahu LBC Net. You will get daily quizzes and updates regarding the classes. Sometimes I provide PDF. Sometimes they provide no 42 C accident theater of the absurd which yeah, characterized by the pictures like the illogicality and the purposelessness of human life. Which old English poem is referred to as the Glee Man song by the Bill translator J.R.R. Tolkien. So Seema's Henny, Seema's Henny, okay. Seema's Henny, then J.R.R. Tolkien, okay. J. R. R. Tolkien, which is like Lord of the Rings. J. R. R. Tolkien. They are okay. Three Beowulf has been okay, translated okay, okay, in many languages. Okay. But the two famous translations are one by Isma Seni, another is by J. R. R. Tolkien. Here, which old English poem is referred to as the Glee Man's Song by the Beowulf translation? Which J.R.R. Tolkien, the Battle of Melden, Battle of Nuremberg, the Fight at Finsburg, and Wonder. Excellent, excellent. It is the Fight at Finsburg. The Fight at Finsburg is the right. Answer. And here is the quotation you see that the old English poem referred to as the dimensions by the Bills for the Fight at Finsburg. And here you see, uh, this is the line that here is an excerpt from the introduction. That they are Gleeman's traditional stock in trade. Included Gleeman's songs, of which traces remain embedded in the heroic text, without the mention of a somewhat obscure fight at a place called Finsburg. It is one of the Gleeman's song in Bale. Okay. So, which group of American writers in 1950s and 1960s sought release? An illumination through a bohemian counterculture of sex, drugs, Jain Buddhism, and gained fame through the readings in coffee houses accompanied by jazz music. Lost generation, transcendentalists, the beat generation, romantic words. Now tell me, beat generation or lost generation? Which one? 1950s and 1960s man. 1950s to 1960s man. Drug addicted, Jain Buddhism, bohemian counterculture of sex. Okay, 44 is on your screen. Do answer in the comment box. Do answer in the comment box. Question 44 is on your screen. Which group of American actors in 1950s and 1960s do they sought release and illumination through a bohemian counterculture of sex, drugs, and gender? 44, it is the no, 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 no. Beat generation, but 1950s, 1960s, a short release illumination, drugs, addicted, coffee, of sex, charge music, charge music. It associated with charge music, it associated with beat generation. Beat generation, beat, beat. Okay, here C is the 
right hand side. Uh, what is one of the characteristics of works in the theater of the abstract? What is one characteristic of works in the theater of the abstract? Clear narrative structure, no. understandable psychological motives, no. emotional catharsis, no. theater of the abstract, lag of clear narrative. Okay. And understandable psychological motives. Understandable. Or emotional catharsis. It is the right answer. In the old English poetry, what is thula? Thula kya hai? Birds pattern? Hmm. Hmm. Bravo. Got it. A Scandinavian poetic form, a metric list of names, or a heroic invention. The only English poetry Thula Kaya Thula Thula a verse pattern a metrical list of names Scandinavian poetic forms heroic invocation Thula to heroic invocation metrical verse pattern Thula Thula is a 45 yeah 42 to okay, 46 46 now 43 is one second 46 46 is one second one second Here it is actually a metrical list of names. Thula is actually a metrical list of names. Here is the explanation. Thulas are metrical names, lists, or list of poetic synonyms compiled mainly for oral citation. Main function of Thula is thought to be mnemonic. The old Norse term was first applied to the to an English poem, the old English mixes by Andrews, Kessler, and William Andrews. Thula is a metrical form. Metrical. Next question. Which of the tales in Clouds of Canterbury is the Beast Fable, the Martin Still, the Arts Pistols, the Miller Still, the Lucky Beast Fable? Beast Fable, do answer. Beast, what is the Beast Fable? Which one is the Beast Fable? Which of the tales okay, in Clouds of Canterbury is the Beast Fable? It is this, the Nan's Pistols. Okay. Nan's Pistols is known as the Beast Fable. Okay. And the Nan's Pistols. Mm -hmm. Here you see, is one of the Canterbury Tales by Middle English poet Geoffrey Chaucer, composed in 1930. It is a beast fable, long epic based on an incident in the Rainier Cycle. The crystal is a beast fable. Question number 48 here Anglo Saxon attitude is a history of English social customs, novel by Angus Williams, a sociological treatise on early English tribes, a lost fragment of brief egotistical history of the English. So Anglo-Saxon attitude, Anglo-Saxon 47b, or 47b, yeah, non-specific is correct, draw, 47b, I don't say, 47b, I don't say, draw, excellent. And Anglo-Saxon attitude is actually a novel by Angus Williams. So okay. Angus Wilson has written, Angus Wilson has written, Anglo-Saxon attitude, it's a novel by Angus Wilson's Anglo-Saxon attitudes. Anglo-Saxon attitudes, okay. It's a satirical novel by Angus Wilson, published in 1956. It was Wilson's most popular book, and many consider it at its best. So, Anglo Saxon Attitudes by Angus Wilson. Who won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 2022? Annie Ernox, Abdul Raja Gurna, Olga Tukarchak, Haruki Murakam. Who won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 2022? So, by self. Ishko Nobel Prize Milata. It is Annie Erenangs, Abdul Raja Gurnaha, Olga Tukarchu, and Haruki Mutan. So here the right answer is Annie. Annie. Okay. 49 A. Excellent round. It is Annie Erenangs. Excellent. It is Annie Erenangs. He got the Nobel Prize in Literature in 2022. Excellent. And you see, there is Annie Erenangs, a French writer who was awarded the 2020 Nobel Prize in Literature. For the courage and the clinical acuity with which she uncovers the roots and estrangements and collective restraints of personal memory. I literally welcome most autobiographical maintains close links with the sociology. And today's last question is here who was awarded the 2020 Prize for Age English Novel of the Year? Michael Ondadzi, then Sehan Kondarika, Nada Amali Almija, who was awarded the 2022. Booker Prize for the best English novel of the year. 
750 is on your screen who has awarded the 2022 uh, booker prize for the best english novel of the year for the best english novel of the year michael wonder said then sian torun dalita torun dalita so it is actually sian torun dalita okay b is the answer b sian torun dalita sian torun dalita first world date okay the 2022 booker prize for the best english novel of the year so sian torun dalita is the right answer last question here what is the title of the novel for which sian torun dalita torun dalita Or the 2022 Booker Prize. What is the name of the novel? For who is okay? Sihan, Sihan, Karuna Tilaka. Who won the 2022 Booker Prize? Your options are Seven Moons of Mali Almeida, the English novel of the year, Sri Lanka literary excellence, none of the above. For which novel? Sihan, Karuna Tilaka won the 2022 Booker Prize. I'll be ending the session okay with these questions, and I'll be ending the session here with these questions. And here the right answer is yeah, 51, 51. No, no. It is the seven moons of Mali Almeida. The seven moons of Mali Almeida. This is the name of the novel for which C M Kurnthalika won the 2022 Booker Prize. The seven moons of Mali Almeida. So A is the right answer. So I'll be ending here with this. Those who have not joined, those who have not watched this session, so you can watch this video. It will be available in the playlist. Just visit the playlist. It's President's University uh, mock test. You'll get that there. So thank you once again for watching the video. Thank you once again for watching the video. And make sure to subscribe the channel. Have the bell icon to stay get up, to stay updated. And don't forget to hit the like button. And share the friends as well. Hit the like button as well. Please do like the session and good night to everyone. Good night to everyone. Tomorrow we will be meeting again. Tomorrow we will be meeting again. Good night, everyone. Good night. Please do like the session. Please do like the session.